Let's see what kind of gross, disgusting. Oh, I need a different screwdriver. Okay, take two. Let's see what kind of disgusting thing a drive without a without a front cover has, is, was. Yeah, it's pretty dirty. I'm gonna blow this out with compressed air first before I go any further. I probably, probably, I have enough access to clean the heads at this point. Um, although, look at this faceplate, man. And what does that say? I have to look at that under high magnification and see if I can determine what that says on there. The other drive says something similar. This says, it definitely says J, JV363 and something above it I can't read at all. Let's take a look at the other one. Maybe we can tell. This one says the number is 1354E 283K Two, maybe 256k 256k no oh, this is your standard chinon drive I mean this was used usually if somebody goes to the trouble of putting a label on something has better odds than not, you know, for, oh geez. Let's put a disc in here, because. Trying to get, there's two screws. These holes are there for these screws, but. isn't right. Don't like the angle. <clears throat> Jeez. Screws are kind of frozen on there. Going. Now, all I'm going to wind up doing is stripping out the screw. <sighs> Whoa, that screw is frozen on there. And I'm stripping it out. Oh boy. What's that kind of al soft alloy that screw is made out of? Maybe. Um. So what is this? This is a Panasonic Matsushita. Um, in their infinite wisdom, Panasonic put thread locker on these two screws that hold the front panel on. And also they're like a soft alloy. So how in the heck are you supposed to get them off without stripping them out? 
And why would you even bother to put thread locker on them? I can see it in there. It's like a green... It's ridiculous. Anyway, I'm going to use some pliers and inch those out and replace them with some regular screws. Hopefully. I mean, I have all kinds of screws, so I'm sure I should be able to. Well, trying to load workbench, and this is what happened, so nothing can be perfect. Let's see if we can sort this out. This was DF0, and it seems to have a read-write error. Okay, so this drive is having read-write errors. It won't even start to read. It doesn't even read anything, pretty much. Um, so I need to take it apart further. Um, there's a lot of electrolytic caps on this particular drive and um, yeah I just wonder well let me take it apart a little bit further and see if we can clean it so I I got this was here I removed it this was here I removed it with its spring and so now I just need to figure out how this thing comes off of here What's it catching on? It's catching on something. There's a plastic piece right here. Pretty sure that's it. Yeah. There's a piece of plastic that sticks up here. It's kind of a levering action. And you just lift it up over there. Okay. Easy. Get the heads and don't let them smash down together. Just lightly push them down. Okay. See where the motor is that uh, I guess this this is the motor that moves the head. This seems to be locked in with some uh, you know Loctite glue or whatever. This one. This had, and this has a washer on it. This one does not. It, it's almost like there was a different screw there. And that is not the right screw or the screw that was there originally. So I'm just going to give this a clean. I'm going to put it back together. I'm going to see if I can make an adjustment to this.
Okay, I've made this adjustment on this by turning it slightly uh, clockwise and it's gotten farther now into the loading. I think it might may have moved. Yeah, it probably moved while I was... It looks like it moved. So I need to lock it down <laughs> and then try. I'm going to reboot right now. But it seems to be an alignment problem. But that's a good sign right there. Oh, that's not a good sign. Okay. It's just trial and error. This one's super easy to adjust, though. Yeah, it's getting farther now. That might be it. I'm going to lock down the other one. This is a JIS uh, screwdriver, by the way, Japanese Phillips, and it seems to fit into this drive. Of course, it's Panasonic drive, but I think, folks, we may have fixed this drive. Yes, we did. 100%. Oh, man, I'm, I'm doing really well on this Amiga 2000. So I'll post a video about this floppy drive because I, I, people have got to be having problems with this thing. And it looks like somebody tried to make an adjustment. There is a screw that is missing its Loctite and its, uh, and its washer, actually. Um, let's lock this other one down good. Okay, it's good. So the way I'm going to do this is I am going to reapply um, thread locker uh, to the outside. That's all they do is just put a bead of thread locker or other, some sort of other super glue type material. Thread locker is good. I mean, it's basically super glue, but uh, it's colored, so you, it makes it obvious that somebody has put something on there to keep it uh, right where it is. So I almost want to make sure that it's perfect, and I want to put a washer on this screw and lock, and then tighten them back down as as far as they until they're pretty snug, and then test it. Do a lot of testing with it. Maybe copy a disc or whatever, and then when I'm pretty satisfied. Then I'll, I'll, I'll uh, I should probably scrape off the existing, put some new thread locker on there, um, and call it a day. So that is a Panasonic drive fixed. Uh, just a little additional piece of information. I tested Workbench in here and it loads fine. Um, then I put Paradroid in and I was getting read write errors. And so I made an adjustment to this. I turned it ever so slightly back counterclockwise uh, and kind of, I mean, we're talking fractions of a millimeter. Um, it's good to sort of get your fingers around here and just inch it, just, I mean, we're not even talking inches, just fractions of a millimeter moving this until you can get a good um, load out of a game. And so now it is working on Paradroid. So far, so good. I'll do some more tests. And uh, if I find anything, I'll report back. Otherwise, I'll call this fixed. Everything's still working good. I've loaded a couple of different uh, games and um, uh, the only other thing I want to cover is obviously this I need to get at this with some uh, alcohol it's got something here that I thought maybe that was a pen mark but it's something thicker that actually has a texture to it I don't know what that is but I'm gonna go at this and clean it up make it look all nice or as close to nice as I can and call this one done 
I don't know if I showed the disassembly, but um, this just simply goes on top and then there's a screw here and a screw here and that's all that holds the cover on. It's Typhoon Thompson playing in the background. Um, let's just try this while we're waiting. Okay. Um, what was I going to say? Uh, yeah, so I have that other Chinon drive that's working, but I'm still going to par partially disassemble it and, and, um, and clean it out and then test it again to make sure that uh, this other Chinon drive just has tabs in the sides and in the back. Slide something in there. There we go. Just gonna clean the heads real quick. Uh, I don't want to stick a nice disc in a dirty drive, you know. Just I got the the uh, ear cleaner, cotton bud, Q-tip in there. Testing it seems to be well. Let me put some tension, a little bit of tension. It's just sandwiched in between the two heads, and I'm just rotating it. Not too bad. I mean, well, no visible. Dirt. Okay, let's just try. Can I manage to get both of these hooked up at the same time? And not short something out. Probably not. Oops, I don't want it to. I'm just going to move it because I, I don't really want this other one at TF0. Um, actually, if it's booting 2.0 two ROMs, I can choose the drive to boot on, can I? got a similar thing. A big disc that you adjust to adjust the uh, tracking. There we go. Got it in. Okay. No, it's good. Okay. So, well, as long as I have this plugged in, might as well try some other things with it. Sorry to jump around, but I, I uh, you know, might as well be efficient with my time and uh, fully test this one out as long as I got it plugged in. It seems to work fine. I've already, first thing I did was blow it out with compressed air, and actually that's all I've done off camera. The uh, only other thing uh, that I've done to it at this point was to rub that those those uh, Q-tips on the uh, heads just to clean them. I had tested this already, so I knew it pretty much worked, but I didn't actually clean it yet. So clean the heads. So. Looks like it's working.
seems like I've picked a good selection of discs because uh, Workbench worked on that one, but then um, Paradroid did not. And then, uh, and then when I got those two dialed in, then Xcopy wouldn't work. Paradroid and one Workbench worked on that, but Xcopy did not. So. Okay, so hopefully you can hear this. It's kind of noisy in here with the fan. Well, the fan's not that noisy. The game might be noisy. Uh, so I've gone through this um, stack of games, backups that I have. Um, and uh, every single one of them is uh, working fine. Um, this drive was out of alignment. Um, this really screwed me up. Like, I'm basically this is the alignment of both heads together you can adjust the alignment of just the top head in relation to the bottom head by two screws right at the back of the head um, the bottom head is fixed so you align the top head with the fixed bottom head um, but basically what happened is I, I kinda got tripped up here because I Basically, you loosen these two screws, you move this thing very slightly, and just tighten maybe one side, and then try to load it. Uh, I wish to God that there was a way that I could properly align it with the proper tools, and I tried to search eBay for alignment discs or whatever, because you need an alignment disc. Um, I actually do have the AMI alignment disc system, but I was wondering if there was something newer that I could buy, but it doesn't seem to be. Basically, uh, it's not the software as much. The software is cool because it lets you control, turn on the motor, turn on the, uh, the seek, and change track numbers and stuff like that. Basically, manually control the drive, so that's good. And those seem to be freely available, but the disc itself is made on a special machine where the head alignment is so precise and it writes tracks, test tracks, on each on each track and uh, this is oh no you want to turn that off for now um, and those discs are hard to find or I couldn't find them after looking for 15 minutes or whatever so I gave up on that but basically uh, what I did to get this drive aligned was I loosened both screws I made a slight adjustment tightened just this one tried to load a workbench disc didn't work read write errors keep moving this thing around it moves a little bit to the right moves a little bit to the left counterclockwise clockwise whatever um, got it so that it would read the disc so I was pretty happy about that and then I tried a game and it wouldn't read the game so I made a slightly more adjustment and tightened it down again and then the game worked and so now I'm like wow I'm really close now so here's what you have to watch out for though I have an original X copy professional disc this disc I don't know if they kind of designed it with copy protection or it's just not a very good disc but uh, and I've had problems with this disc before and I didn't think it was the disc I thought it might have been the drive but I think that this, this disc is kind of not a good disc to test with because it'll give read write errors on a drive that's working fine I mean I loaded all these games and workbench on this drive and it's fine but when I tried to load this one there's something non-standard about this disc, whether it was, uh, you know, from age or on purpose. But uh, that's the way I got this uh, drive aligned. And um, I had one of these for an Amiga 500 before, and I regret that I tossed it because that thing just would not get dialed in. And I should hang. Uh, now I'm on a policy where I hang on to things just to see if maybe I can find a solution later. Of course, I don't think I, st I have a solution yet for that, 
Um, anyway, and also I think if I mentioned earlier, if I didn't, just in case, um, these two screws here were actually frozen into the chassis. They're the two screws that hold this faceplate on. And it actually has holes up here to reach it with a, a screwdriver, although uh, not exactly, you can't exactly align your screwdriver well. And because the screws were, they were chemically frozen. They had, I thought when I got them out finally that perhaps they had uh, Loctite put into them, but the, some kind of interaction between the, the cast material of the, the chassis and the screw itself had created some kind of lock on those screws. I mean, there's no, absolutely no reason to have Loctite on those screws. I could see the alignment screws having Loctite in this one, but the Loctite seems to be applied on the surface, not on the threads. And I think it was just some sort of corrosion or chemical reaction between the two metals that froze those things on there. So I managed to get them loose enough to get the plastic off and then I was able to get one of them out, but the other one had a completely stripped out head. So I grabbed a pair of large pliers and just wrenched the thing off. So I found a couple of replacement screws. They're actually Torx screws. Uh, so they shouldn't have it. You shouldn't be stripping them out if they happen to get locked in there again. It was actually the only screws I had that matched the threads. It was some kind of odd thread pattern that I didn't identify, but because I had this huge box of screws, um, you know, I was able to, to get the same ones. So I couldn't tell you what the screws were. Apologize for that. Um, this drive is, is perfectly fine now. So, so far so good on this Amiga 2000. Uh, my next step is to, we've done the ROM switcher. Next step, and the RAM is good. The RAM expansion is good. So the next step is the hard drive controller. So we're going to tackle that next. Gotta love it. <laughs> 